but I learn and I soak up from around me. And I try to always learn from the people who uh, come before me. And I want to acknowledge the three past presidents because I've learned from all of them and hopefully was better because of it. Neil Hutcher, you'll never meet a man with more compassion and fire in his belly about his patience than Neil Hutcher. And although he was born in New York City, you would never know that from his accent and his folksy little sayings about possums and deers and rabbits and things that we never had in Brooklyn. But I owe Neil a lot because Neil put a fire in my belly about never accepting defeat on behalf of our patients. And Phil Schauer, who is just unbridled energy, Phil gets things done. Phil has a plan in mind and he continues at it until it comes to fruition. And we are better as an organization because of it. And Kelvin, for a man that humble to be so famous and so talented, it's amazing. If you talk to Kelvin, he's a regular guy, but if you know about Kelvin, you realize he's something special. And he led with compassion and he led with fairness and he led us through a difficult time with wisdom. And I hope I took some of that away from my dear friend Kelvin as well. Now, unlike Walter Pori's, I can't put everybody who's a member of the society up and thank them because the Apple computer probably would crash. And we've been through that road a few years ago. So I only want to acknowledge a few people that are particularly special to me, but I want everybody to know that I'm sorry if I left you off and you easily could have gone on it. Leaders in the field that I learned from, that were mentors to me, that were supportive of me, particularly for things like promotion, such as Henry and Walter and Harvey, personal friends that I hold dearly, such as uh, Alan, Tracy, Robin, who has been at my side the entire year, supporting me, making me feel good, and all lying to me to tell me I, kept, I was doing a good job, and Raul Rosenthal, who's been a brother to me, both professionally and has been helpful in helping care for my patients down in Florida. Uh, in fact, he's the fourth brother, and my mother bakes for him, and she doesn't bake for me. In the compendium, this was a project that I approached the Executive Council with two years ago because being on the Executive Council, I kept hearing that there was a need for a more formal educational format for our members. And I was doing some of this work before with other organizations, etc to come up with an e-learning, an electronic learning, a web-based, interactive, multimedia, high-tech program that could be used by all clinicians, whatever your degree, your degree is, from doctor to student, dietitian, nurse, etc., that this would be there for you. And the Executive Council thought it was a great idea and said, go forward. And with Brad Lyle, the producer of Foxfire, and this is his specialty, educational production, Julie, my partner at work, who helped me edit and work on this, Walter, who contributed great cartoons, and then The Office, who was great in making sure that we were able to interface with the, uh, the website, we pulled this off. And we would never have without industry support, because industry paid for the whole thing. And to do a project like this is very, very expensive. Have you all had a chance to look at it? Would you like to see it for just a couple of minutes? This is your compendium. And I'm just going to load it again. This is by ASMBS, for ASMBS, done by ASMBS members. And it's 26 credit hours, so hopefully, if we've accomplished what we set out, this can be the educational foundation of our society going forward. And it's broken up into eight chapters, obesity overview, bariatric medicine, behavioral medicine, nutritional medicine, bariatric surgery, programmatic issues, risk management, and metabolic effects. And each one has a number of talks. And you could scroll down and you could say, well, I'd like to start from number one and go all the way through it. Or you can pick and choose which ones you want to hear. So let me just see. And I'll show you one of our talks. That's Dr. The Sasha Stiles. Of the bariatrician. The bariatrician's role. My job mainly is to assess and improve on the medical comorbidities of uh, my patients so that they may have a successful and safe bariatric surgery. Now, if you fast forward, forward through it, she'll fast forward John with you. 
Di Maria in 2007 gives us a mortality risk score based on uh, And we have case studies, interactive case studies. This is a case about the 55-year-old man, two years status post Roux-en-Y gastric bypass with a preoperative VMI of 45 kilograms per meter squared. Pre-op, the patient had a history of impaired glucose tolerance. The patient has... So you get a history and then you one. get to answer questions. What further metabolic investigation might be done to determine the diagnosis? And if you choose incorrectly, you're told. That's right. The post-gastric bypass hypoglycemia syndrome is classified by a blood glucose under 50 milligrams per deciliter. And the major part of the program is the surgery. And do a little things into, to make it interesting for the viewer as well. This just in, a single bariatric operation may dramatically improve a number of obesity-associated comorbid conditions. Scott Shakura, ASMBS News, Boston. The rationale for operating on patients with severe obesity is to treat the comorbidities of severe obesity. And we have videos. We've gotten videos from every operation from the people who do it the best. We'll be talking about the gastric banding technique. Initially, we'll be using the lap band from Allergan. And when we... Anyway, it is a video. If I played it a little bit further, you would see. And, you know, our members don't... Today, we'll be talking about long-term consequences of the adjustment. Our members always don't agree on how to manage certain problems. And sometimes that sets them up for a really good debate. Dr. Schauer, you're past president of the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. You're a thought leader, well-respected in the world. What's all this about the sleeve gastrectomy? Well, Dr. Higa, um, you too are quite important, and you're the current president of the American Society for Bariatric Surgery, and soon... Now, after they start, stop slinging the bull around, they actually debate the topic academically, and we have a number of those in the program. And we have a lot of Walter's cartoons that are germane to the topic at large. <laughs> and we have post-assessment exams, so you can view the program, and then you can take a, a test to see how well you do. Now, there's more things included. Let me show you this. This is not the Wheel of Fortune. This is the Wheel of the Faculty. So you could decide that there are certain faculty members you want to hear their presentations. You could just sort of spin the wheel around, find one you like. It's Christine Rende. And there's Christine. There's a, a summary of her bio. We've interviewed her answering some important questions. It appears that when you repair a hiatal hernia at the time of band slippage, it actually does not increase the slip rate. Many surgeons are afraid of doing the dissection behind the stomach and behind the esophagus because... So that's the compendium, and I hope it meets the needs of the membership for a long time. We can update it, change it, repurpose it as we want, and it's part of the ASMBS arsenal now. Well, in, 